Good morning. This is Kim Warning, United Methodist Church, and I am Pastor Penny Corey. <clears throat> Welcome to our worship service today. We have come together in the presence of the Almighty God to praise Him and to hear His Holy Word. So let us pray and prepare our hearts and minds to receive God's blessings and to meet God in this holy place. Um, the flowers on the sides of the um, church this morning are from Dave Reedy's funeral celebration service. And um, we just want to thank all of you who helped us either in the service yesterday or at the reception at Dave's house after the graveside. It was truly a celebration of his life. Um, I just want to continue to give you uh, updates from the conference office. Um, it is just that we may sing in our worship service if we have received our uh, COVID vaccine. And so uh, we welcome you to, to sing. And if you haven't had your vaccines, please just hum along with us. Um, today is Mother's Day. <clears throat> and in our United Methodist churches, we give a special offering from Mother's Day to Father's Day to support our United Methodist retirement homes. This offering helps our residents who have outlived their own financial resources, but it also helps them to remain in places that they call home and enjoy lifelong friendships and outstanding service. So during the, the months from Mother's Day to Father's Day, you may write a check to KUMC and on the memo line write Samaritan Program. I would like to say Happy Mother's Day uh, to all the women in the congregation this morning. Um, by simple acts of faith, both great and small, God chooses to expand his influence in the world. He often does that through the intimate and strong love of women. Mothers are God's gift. We would like to thank all of the women of our church for their love. Whether you have actually given birth or whether you have nurtured others by your love and care, we give thanks to God for you this morning and would like to give you a carnation. So uh, Steve's going to come down and give all the women a carnation. I've already chosen a white one up here for myself. <clears throat> At this time, let us bring our generous gifts to the, uh, of the Spirit of God today through our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings, that they may bring hope and new life to our Lord to our church, to our community, and to our world. <clears throat> you may leave your offering in the plate that is at the back of the church, or you may mail them to the church office, P.O. Box 2095, Kilmarnock, Virginia. <clears throat> and now let us stand and sing or hum our doxology.
please remain standing and join in the call to worship. From the rising of the sun until its setting in the west, God's holy name is to be praised. On the lips of children and youth, God's holy name is to be praised. In the visions of old and the dreams of the young, God's holy name is to be praised. Let all you to turn in your hymnal to 445 and we will sing verses 1 through 3. <laughs> to stand and turn to 881 <clears throat> as we affirm our faith together.
come to the time and that we lift up our prayers and our praises and our intercessions for others to God's throne of mercy and grace. So I have some prayer um, concerns to lift before you. I um, had a call from a Joe Sopleta this week. His uncle, Leo Kudlow, is dealing with COPD and having a hard time breathing, and he had to go back to the hospital this week. Um, we want to continue to pray for Lynn Manley's sister. She has developed a complication, uh, and they had to take her back into surgery. John and Jamie Henley have asked for prayers as they will be on the road traveling quite a bit this month. They're going to several family weddings and to a graduation. I'm asking prayers for my daughter-in-law, Caitlin's 14-year-old brother, Rome, who is back in the hospital with mental health reasons. And then asking prayers also for Jean Hagen. We got an email from Garling giving us a report. <clears throat> After she had a hard fall, uh, she has had several brain surgeries. She is continuing with her ther therapy and is really enjoying getting the cards from our KUMC congregation. They thank us for all the prayers and uh, ask us to continually ask for God's blessing and healing for Jean. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, creator of all things, thank you for this day. It is a gift. It is a holy day. It is Mother's Day, and we thank you for all of our mothers who gave birth to us. Bless all of our mothers and all woman, women who have nurtured others' children. Pour out your spirit on them and bless them today. Comfort and care for all mothers who grieve the loss of a child. Surround them with your love. Today, may the splendor of heaven visit us in a fresh way. We receive these gifts from God. His presence, his peace, his power, and his protection. Lord, Help us to be your disciples, bearing fruit for your kingdom. Enlarge our field of vision. Lord, we know we are never alone in the task that you give us. You are our strength and our help. We pray your kingdom come, your will be done. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. May Jesus Christ increase in us. Oh God, hear the prayers of our hearts today, especially for the ones we have lifted up this morning. Reach out with love, grace, mercy, comfort, and healing. Oh great King of love, let the leaves of the tree of life bring healing to your people. Send your comfort to those who grieve the loss of a loved one, especially the family and friends of Dave Reedy. We're thankful for the men and women who serve in our armed forces to keep our country and our world safe. Bless all the governmental leaders with wisdom and keep them on the path of truth and freedom. Lord, bless this congregation of Christians here at KUMC and keep us as the apple of your eye. Keep us serving, keep us giving in our faith. Keep us growing. Bless our missionaries serving around the world as they share the love and salvation of Jesus Christ with others. And now we pray in the name of our risen Lord with the confidence of the children of God saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this
Now I invite all of us to uh, <clears throat> be blessed by the special music, All Good Gifts by Our Ladies Trio, Laurie Breakwell, Carol Fletcher, and Judy Neal. Let us pray. O oh God, speak to us by your word and walk with us until the day of your coming. Speak to us, O oh God, and fulfill in us all of your purposes for your glory. Amen. We have two scripture readings today. The first is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 8 and 16. This is to my Father's glory, that you may bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. And from the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. This is the word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. The title of our sermon today is Chasing Vines. Let us pray. Dear God, anoint my words as I preach this morning with the power of your Holy Spirit to build up the body of Christ. Help us all to hear and understand the truths that you want to teach us from your word. For you, O oh God, are our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last Sunday we began to look at the teachings of Jesus in John chapter 15. Today we will continue to explore this passage a little further. <clears throat> The grapevine is a prolific plant. A single vine bears many grapes. In the Old Testament, grapes symbolize Israel's fruitfulness in doing God's work here on earth. Psalms 80 verse 89 says, O oh God Almighty, you brought a vine out of Egypt. You cleared the ground for it. You planted it. It took root and filled the land. In John 15, verse 1, Jesus himself declares, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Remain in me and I will remain in you. Last week we talked about what it meant to be a branch on God's vine. Branches are those who claim to be followers of Jesus Christ. The fruitful branches live in Christ and bear much fruit. We learned last week that the unproductive branches are pruned away and separated from the vine. They are cut off, tossed aside, and thrown into the fire. Many people try to be good, honest people who do what's right. But Jesus says the only way to live a truly godly life is to stay close to him like a branch when it's attached to the vine. All people are created by God. So I want to say to you this morning that you matter to God. You can make a difference right where you are. Your maker, your master wants to show you how. He can take all of your, the things that concern you and sooner or later he can use it to change your life, your family, your neighbors, your friends, your co-workers. Every day, you can make a difference when you let God lead the way. Beth Moore has written a book that's called Chasing Vines, and she says, that's the curious thing about chasing vines. Somewhere along the way, we discover that God, the vine dresser, has been chasing us all along. <clears throat> Several years ago, while I was living in Virginia Beach, I attended a Bible study. And in this Bible study, each week, we were encouraged to memorize one verse of Scripture. I remember one of them very well. It was from Proverbs 13, verse 12. It says, Hope deferred makes a heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is the tree of life. You and I are often distraught about our dreams that never come true. We may wonder at times why God has not answered our prayers, but this morning I want to tell you the truth. God cares about you. He hears every prayer. He knows every dream that you have dreamed. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But the hope that we have in God is not deferred. 
God wants you to know this morning that you matter to him. Did you notice I keep saying that? That's the message I want you to take home today. You matter to him. He takes all that concerns you and he makes it matters. We were created to contribute and to add some measure of benefit to those around us. God created Adam and Eve and he put them in the garden and he said, add to it, work the ground. The two of you multiply and be fruitful, fill the earth. Then Jesus added to God's instruction by giving us abundant life and giving us the power of his spirit. For if we follow Jesus, that's what we can expect to hope for in life. Nothing happens on earth is more important than Jesus' instructions in John chapter 15 about how we are to bear much fruit. In her poem, The Summer Day, Mary Oliver asked an unforgettable question, deeply pondering. She said, tell me, what is, what is it you plan to do with your one wild, precious life? Let me say that again. What is it that you plan to do with your one wild, precious life? Did you know that your wild and precious life matters to God? You are his precious child. Your gifts matter. Your pain matters. Your dreams matter, your failures matter, your relationships matter, your past, your present, and your future matters to God. Everything that God has created and planted matters. God wants you to flourish. It's all a part of the process that enables us to grow in our Christian lives and bear the fruit in the hands of the vine dresser. I want to say to you this morning, if your hope has been deferred, if at times in your life your heart is sick and saddened by the things that are happening in your life, Jesus has good news for you today. God wants to do a new thing in your life. He says to us all, abide in me and I in you. I am the vine and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples you did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you that you should go and bear much fruit. My friends, as you look at the Gospel of John, the timing of Christ's teachings on the vine is especially compelling because the disciples were on the move when he delivered this message. The disciples were headed to Gethsemane, the place where Jesus would sweat blood in prayer and then be arrested. The disciples had just come from being around the table with Jesus, where he shared the bread and the wine with them and washed their feet, telling them to go out and humble themselves and serve others as he was serving them. Jesus said to his disciples, I do as my Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. 
Rise, Jesus says, and let us go from here. Jesus delivered these words with the weight of the world on his shoulders. Jesus was facing the cross of Calvary. Jesus promised the disciples that he would prepare a place for his followers. He said, in my father's house, there are many rooms. Jesus said, rise, let us go from here. My friends, my fellow disciples, I ask you, what will you do with your wild, precious life when you leave this sanctuary today? Jesus calls us to obedience. Jesus calls us to love. Jesus calls us to serve. Jesus calls us to chase after the vine dresser. Jesus promised to send his followers the Holy Spirit. So when we leave this sanctuary today, we do not leave alone. We have a helper, the Holy Spirit, to help us do what Jesus asked us to do in bearing much fruit. Jesus promises he will manifest himself in each one of us through the Holy Spirit. Jesus also promised to pray for his disciples and for all who would follow in his footsteps. So my friends, I want you to know and realize that Jesus himself Sitting beside God the Father in heaven, Jesus is praying for you right now. He's praying that you will bear much fruit. He's praying that you will have the strength that you need to go forward with the task that he has given you. He's praying that we will all read his word and obey his instructions. Don't let the busyness of the world replace or substitute for God's desires in your life. There comes a time when our ways and our habits are just not enough. While they're good things that we do, we sometimes get entangled and we start cutting off the circulation between the vine and the branch. Jesus wants to remind us that nothing and no one can sustain you but him. So Jesus also gives to us this word that he gave to his disciples, that Jesus may look at your life and he may want to prune some of the things out of your life so that you can more freely focus and more effectively focus on him. So I would say to all of us this morning, myself included, Jesus wants to shift our security so that we will all abide in him alone, <clears throat> not in other people or places or things. He has sought you, he has chosen you. You are special. He has given us many spiritual disciplines to follow. He has given us our dreams and visions. He has given us our vocations, our callings, and our communities of faith in which we live. So when the struggles of this life keep messing with you, I want you to remember who you are. You are God's wild and precious child. You are a branch connected to the vine. 
So I ask you, what will you do? Where will you go when you leave this holy place today? How do we, who are the branches, remain effective and fruitful Christians? How do we embrace our role as branches? Perhaps we will see that in all of our efforts to chase the vine, we will see that the vine dresser has actually been chasing us all along. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you are the vine and we are the branches. Keep us chasing the vine dresser and producing the fruit of the kingdom. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I would ask each of us as disciples of Jesus Christ and each of us as branches that are connected to the vine of Jesus to rededicate our lives this morning as we sing this awesome song, Here I Am, Lord, hymn number 593. Let us stand. <coughs>
receive the benediction from Jude 1, 24. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before the glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore. Amen.